People are getting used to me in this village. Ed the bike man. They wave at me in the street, chat to me in the pub. Neutral topics, the weather, mountain biking. But every once in a while, a new customer. I replace his cables, oil his brakes, and he says, thanks ever so much. You're not from round here. And I say, no, London. And he says, oh, London. Then he waits for the explanation of my exile from the metropolis. But I just smile. And he smiles. And I say, come back soon for a free service. And he says, thanks. And wheels his bike out of the shop. I sigh with relief because my story is not for public consumption. There are too many secrets and reputations at stake. It's one of those how my life changed in 24 hours stories that I used to think happened only in movies. It even begins like a movie. A sunny day in London, end of summer. I'm up at seven, showered and shaved by eight, stepping out the door of my flat by 9.15 in my new suit. I look the business. I need to. This is no ordinary day. I have this ordeal at ten. There are three of us, rivals, vision statements. To save our jobs. One to stay, two to go. It's happening everywhere. Hard times. And tonight, tonight I have reservations at Euphoria. Dinner with my girlfriend, Lucinda. We'll be celebrating my job retention and I'll be proposing marriage. Lucinda will accept. Life sorted. I hear him before I see him. Squeaky wheel. Writer, comedian, broadcaster, barrister, atheist, erstwhile circus clown, Pen Reinhardt. Polymathic national treasure, Pen Reinhardt. In his trademark bow tie, cycling by on his trademark fold-away bicycle. Pen Reinhardt. Gracing my very own obscure London street with his polymathic presence. Central London, I see famous people all the time. I never ask for autographs. You won't find me queuing at a movie premiere. I never shout in the street. So I don't know why I did it. I heard a voice, my voice, coming unmistakably from me. All hail Pen Reinhardt, national traitor! Gosfield Street is not worthy of you! Pen Reinhardt is renowned for his courtesy. He turns, smiles, waves. This causes him to wobble. A second later, he cycles straight into a delivery van. Does an aerial head roll over the handlebars onto the roof of the van. Slides off. He's lying there. No one about. No van driver, no pedestrians. Just me and Pen. I know what I must do. Rush to his aid, check vital signs, call ambulance, keep him comfortable until ambulance arrives. I know what I did. Rushed back through the door of flat, slid under duvet, lay there. Oh, it's hot in here. Oh, I need to think. Oh, it's not fair. Day began so well. Now there's a national treasure lying comatose in my road and it's all my fault. Oh. <laughs> what am I doing? I have to get help. I love Pen Reinhardt. I revere Pen Reinhardt. Everybody does. Oh, thank God. He's going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. Vision statement at ten. I'll hang on to my job. Dinner. Engagement. I better stay put for a while. Wonder whether it's made the news. Oh, it's not yet impossible. Writer, comedian, broadcaster, barrister, atheist, erstwhile circus clown Penhaligon Reinhardt has been involved in a bicycle accident in central London. Mr. Reinhardt's secretary had the following statement. We've just heard. Uh, we're all in shock. Pen was an experienced cyclist. Oh. I've no idea how it happened. Uh, they've taken him to hospital for tests. 
That is all that I'm able to tell you at this time. <laughs> we can confirm that Penn Reinhardt is on his way to University College Hospital. <gasps> uh, there we are, the ambulance making its way through the traffic of central London. <gasps> A quote just in from one of the ambulance men. It was Penn Reinhardt. He was totally concussed. That's Penn Reinhardt on his way to UCH in central London, totally concussed. Oh. Now the weather. God, it's all my fault. Indian summer day in London and the southeast due to that ongoing pressure system coming in from the Atlantic. In Scotland and the north, however, it's a different story. Rain, rain. Hello. Is that Ed Hansen? Who is this? Ed? It's Kitty, from the library. Kitty works in the children's department. She's a classic introvert. Never speaks. Sweet smile. Great with the kids. Ed, I'm sorry to bother you, but we're starting, and you're not here. I'm on my way, Kitty. Uh, the chairperson from the council is here. Who? Uh, Barbara Wynne-Jones. She's with the personal secretary to the Minister for Libraries, Culture and Sport, Oliver... Well, somebody, I didn't get his last name. Nick invited them. They're staying all morning to watch the presentations. Your name is first on the list. Oh. They keep asking where you are. Tell Alexi to go first. Alexi's hiding in the loo. Oh, th then you go first, Kitty. Me? OK, if they let me. Tell Nick I'm getting a cab. I know. I'll tell them you're helping a little old lady who got hit by a bus. Oh. <laughs> About street normal, excellent. Proceed north to New Cavendish Street, find cab, get on with life. Guilty secret, deal with it later. Oh. I'm away, Kitty. Edwin? Mother. Lucinda tells me you're taking her to Euphoria. That's right. The sooner you marry that girl, the better. Yes, Mother. You'll need a decent salary. You should work for Henry. Henry is my elder brother. Mother thinks Henry is perfect. I know nothing about high finance. Henry could train you just because you choose a life of perverse underachievement. Mother, I can't talk now. Lucinda thinks your attitude to life is sophomoric. Sophomoric? When did she say that? Yesterday. Mother, would you please stop ringing Lucinda? She rings me. The poor girl needs someone to share her frustration. Oh, no. Oh, no. What? Television. Pen Reinhardt. Someone's pushed him off his bike. No, they haven't. He fell. Just last night I was reading his commonplace book. Isn't that extraordinary? Hardly extraordinary. It sold 50 million copies. I was on my way to yoga. Now I'll be glued to the telly. Go to yoga, Mother. I don't envy the man who did it. How do you know it's a man? It's always a man. One of those lycrists. Lycrists? Cyclists in lycra. Big shoulder bags. When they find him, they'll vilify him. Oh. You can't go knocking national treasures off their bicycles and escape vilification. Oh. Ed? Oh. Ed? Oh. You're breaking up, Mother! Can you hear me, Ed? <laughs> That's when I see it. The metal seeing eye. Painted copper to blend in with the brickwork. Corner of New Cav and Gosfield. Swivelling. It's seen everything. My shout, pen's wobble, pen's concussion. A zealous police investigator will investigate. Me on video. News channels will play the tape endlessly. If you recognise this man, call this number. My rival, Alexi, and Nick, my boss, who's never liked me, they'll ring the police. That's Ed. Ed Hansen's your man. The public, who revere Pen Reinhardt, will point at me in the supermarket. They'll whisper, it's him, the pen attacker. Mother is right. They'll tear me limb from limb. I know what I must do. Confess. Explain before they release the tape. I've never been to a police station before. Huge queue. Joining the queue makes me feel incredibly guilty. Notice on the wall. If you consider yourself in imminent danger, please make yourself known at once. There is a constable patrolling the queue, big bearded bear of a guy. I signal to him. All right, sir. Me? Uh, fine. Uh, just reading the notice, uh, which does not apply to me. Um, <clears throat> no imminent danger, but I'm, I'm a bit pressed for time. How can I help you, sir? I'm here to make a statement. Statement? Confession. Pen Reinhardt. Concussion in Gosfield Street. I'm responsible. Are you now? Afraid so. He was cycling by. I shouted. He waved, ran smack into a van, sort of flipped over the handlebars. Hey, presto. Concussed. You shouted? Yes. What did you shout? I would rather not repeat exactly what I shouted. Something abusive? No, on the contrary. What did you shout, sir? 
All hail Pen Reinhardt's national treasure, Gosfield Street, is not worthy of you. Say that again. You can see me, shouting. I'm on CCTV. Are you indeed? Here's hoping we can spot you in the crowd. What do you mean? We've already had 14 gentlemen, plus several ladies, claiming personal responsibility for Mr Reinhardt's concussion. That's when I tune into the people up at the counter. So, I raised my bow and arrow. I aimed my air rifle at his basket. I know where he lives, so I snuck in and I sabotaged his bicycle. There was something he said on the Today programme that made me take against him. I never miss. I never, ever miss. I knew his wheel would collapse. It would make him fall. <laughs> That's crazy. They're all crazy. I am entirely responsible. In that case, you'll have to wait your turn, sir. I, I, I'm expected to work. Key presentation. Ah, vision statement, is it? We had him last week. They got rid of five of us. OK, I should have waited. Made my confession with the other nutters. But just then... On my way, Kitty. Ed? Lou! Lucinda, my girlfriend. Who's Kitty? A colleague, work. How did it go? Go? The presentation. Uh, postponed. Until when? You at the CAF? Yes, going out of my mind. See you in ten. Lucinda is a criminal barrister. She's been waiting two days for a verdict on a wife accused of poisoning her husband's lover with a quiche Lorraine. I hail a cab to Lucinda's CAF. I never take cabs. They're expensive and the cabbies make me nervous, so I tend to over-tip. This cabbie is listening to talk radio. People phoning in with stories of their encounters with Penn Reinhardt. How charming he is, how genuine. The cabbie keeps shaking his head and going, Poor old Penn. I do not tip him. There she is. Barrister behind plate glass window, round the corner from the bailey, doing the Sudoku. Lou, hi. Shouldn't you be at work? Need some advice. A um, friend of mine in a spot of bother. You haven't got any friends? He may have killed someone. Who? Nobody famous. Um, craziest thing. He was walking along Oxford Street and he saw someone he thought he recognised across the street. Um, uh, Dave. Dave. So he called out, All hail, Dave. Long time no see. All hail, Dave. Long time no see. Hmm. And Dave, Dave was on a, a motorbike and he looked over at my friend. Which friend? Uh, oh, Homer, Homer. Homer? Dave looked over at Homer and it, it turns out it wasn't Dave at all. <laughs> Homer had made a mistake. Yeah, anyway, he looks over at Homer and he crashes into a bus. Homer crashes into a bus? Dave, Dave crashes into a bus because of Homer. And now Homer is worried because Dave is injured. When did this happen? Recently. Homer feels incredibly guilty. But sometimes people shout things. And it's up to other people to keep control of their bicycles. I, I, I mean, I, I mean their, their motor bicycles. Your hands are shaking. Homer's really worried. So, was his shout actually criminal or, or, just, or just stupid? According to common law, each crime consists of two parts, one physical and one mental. The actus reus and the mens rea, the bad act and the guilty mind. So, the bad act was the shout? Not necessarily. Was there any malice or forethought in the shout? None. So, was it a crime or...? Oh. Hello? Oh, hi, hi, hi. Jury back. Mulcaster. Mm. Mulcaster is Lucinda's head of chambers. Sorry? Uh, definitely. <laughs> I will consider the statutory implications of that proposal. No. What? No. Pen Reinhardt is in a coma. Coma? That's, that's, that's good, isn't it? A, a, a coma is like a deep sleep. It, it, it restores the immune system. Ed, shouldn't you be at work? Work! Another taxi. This cabbie wants me to know that he hero worships Pen Reinhardt. But he has one word of advice. Never cycle. Nobody should ever get on, a bicycle, should ever get on a bicycle in London. That's 11 words, I tell him. He pretends not to hear. I do not tip him. The library. I finally arrive at the library. Low building with hundreds of DVDs on racks and ten precious aisles filled with books. According to Nick, my boss, this is not a library. It's a... Multimedia Information Resource Centre with specialist triggers. The specialist triggers are Kitty's story reading hours and Alexi's computing course for the over-60s. 
I am not a specialist trigger. All I can do is stand around and enthuse about the books. 11.15. I can see Alexei through the plate glass partition, explaining his vision. Behind him, a PowerPoint screen filled with colour-coded pie charts. His vision? Books obsolete, virtual media essential. My boss, Nick, is nodding with approval. Barbara Wynne-Jones, the council chairperson, is taking copious notes. The guy from the ministry, Oliver somebody, looks ecstatic. Nick sees me peering through the window and comes running. Ed! Nick, sorry. Sorry? This morning is not about sorry, Ed. No, sorry. Nick is seven years younger than me. He has a postgraduate degree in cross-platform information technology from an American university. This morning is about vision, Ed. It's about commitment. It's about passion. Absolutely. There's something hypnotic about Nick. Maybe because he says everything in threes. Vigour, audacity, enlightenment. That's what I've promised Mrs. Wynne Jones and the man from the ministry. Absolutely. We've had Kitty and her Dickensian puppets, Alexei and his pie charts. Up to you, Ed. Defend your turf, explicate your vision, capture the territory. Mother would love Nick. She really would. You're on. I enter the space. Alexei smirks. Barbara Wynne Jones glares. Oliver from the Ministry checks his Blackberry. Only Kitty gives me a furtive wave of the hand. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the shamefully late Edwin Hansen. I walk to the podium. I reach into my pocket for the A4 sheet on which I have inscribed my vision. It is not there. They are looking at me expectantly. What was my vision? Something about our village library. Rain on the roof. Me age ten. Smell of the pages. Illustrated Robinson Crusoe. Maybe this is all a dream. Maybe I never shouted at Pen Reinhardt in the street. Maybe I am not really here. Any second I'm going to wake up and, phew, none of that was real. <coughs> that cough was real. Good morning. Three words which encompass everything I believe in. Everything this multimedia... Information Resource Centre stands for. Three words? Why three? Because Nick says everything in threes. So I have three on the brain. But what do I say now? Cross-platform, multi-dimensional, cost-effective. OK, that's actually six words. And what do they mean? I haven't a clue, but it's working. Oliver from the Ministry is smiling. This makes the others smile, even Alexei. I'm about to repeat the mantra when Nick's mobile erupts. Oh, no. No, not Pen. He's, he's in a coma, fell off his bike. He'll be fine. Um, Cross-platform, multi-dimensional, cost-effective. Nobody's listening. Text from my dad. Pen Reinhardt's in a coma. Someone jumps up and switches on a television. We can confirm that Pen Reinhardt is in what his doctors describe as a coma. They will be making a further statement about his condition at one o'clock. Nick collapses. No, not Pen. He sinks to the floor, clutching his hair. No. Alexi sits beside him and gives him a back rub. Oxford. Turns out Nick's father shared a staircase with Penn at Oxford. And when Nick was born, Penn said he would be honoured to serve as a secular godfather. So Penn would come over and read bedtime stories to little Nick. All of Winnie the Pooh. Every blessed word. And you know what a busy dude he is. Then Barbara Wynne-Jones reveals that her cousin was at circus school with Penn. In fact, Penn had saved the cousin's life during a trapeze routine. Then Oliver from the Ministry recalls that he once had lunch with Penn at the Gay Hussar in Soho, the absolute highlight of Oliver's London life. Then Kitty stands up and declares that Penn Reinhardt was her first and only role model. She couldn't contemplate living in a world without Penn in it. Then Alexei begins to cry, and he reveals that he wrote to Penn Reinhardt when he was 16 and confused about his sexuality. And Penn wrote back the wisest letter imaginable, which freaks everyone out because who knew Alexei was gay? Then everyone's looking my way. They're moist-eyed and raw. It's clearly my turn. I am so sorry. I did it. I, I didn't mean to. I was the one who put him in a coma. They gape at me. Kitty stunned. Nick disgusted. Alexi horrified. Barbara Wynne-Jones enraged. Oliver from the Ministry apoplectic. So I leave. I just scurry out of there. I hail a taxi to the hospital. Why the hospital? What was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. I had to be there. 
to see close up the result of my actus reus. This cabbie is certain of one thing. Coma Schmoma. Pen Reinhardt is going to die. And if they don't give him a funeral in Westminster Abbey like Princess Di, then the nation, which is already traumatised by all the cuts, the nation will explode. I do not tip him. There are barricades around the entrance and hundreds of fans leaving flowers. Fans who, if they only knew who I was, would tear me limb from limb. And dotted everywhere, on the pavements, in the road, the world's press. There's a policeman guarding accident and emergency, turning away anyone who isn't obviously bleeding. I improvise a limp. It works. He waves me through. Maybe it's the suit. Worst day of my life, but I look the business. The next bit's even easier. I get in a service lift with three couriers. They're like the three wise men at Christmas, bearing huge gifts with Pen Reinhardt's name engraved on them. Shiny boxes, from the Queen, presumably, and Barack Obama and Steven Spielberg. I follow them out of the lift. They disappear down a corridor. Suddenly, I'm blocked by a bouncer. Big, bearded bear of a guy. Oh, hi. Um, Pen Reinhardt? I know he's in a coma, but if there's someone from his office or his family I could speak to? What's your name? My name? I tell him my name. Ed Hansen. He barks into his walkie-talkie. Oh, then, you. bizarrely, In you go. he motions me forward. A private ward. Too quiet for comfort. I can hear the beep-beep of the life support machine, just like on TV. And the doctors. I can't see them, but I think I hear them. No hope, no hope, no hope, no hope, no hope. I'm about to turn and flee when a woman comes bustling round the corner. I've seen her on the news. The great man's secretary. Mr Harwood. No. Marion Spooner, you have the proofs? Proofs? Penn's Christmas stories. Jeremy said you were delivering them. Ah, yes. They'll be here shortly. I begin to lie with great fluency. Jeremy just wanted to check the pagination. Pagination? Any minute now they'll be here. May I say how sorry we all are in the editorial department about Mr Reinhardt. Oh, call him, Penn. He was fond of you. Was he? Yes, after your meeting last week, he said, there's an agent who'll go far. I'm his agent. You're his agent's assistant. I'm his agent's assistant. Are you on cocaine, Mr Harwood? No, never. Well, occasionally, you know, at parties with the other agents. How is Penn? Coma. Coma. Deep sleep. It restores the immune system. He'll wake up. I hope not. Sorry? The doctors believe it's unlikely he'll re-emerge as Penn Reinhardt. Oh, God. Send him your prayers if you're that way inclined. Mrs Spooner, there's something I need to tell you. I know all about it, Mr Harwood. You do? You first saw Pen Reinhardt on the Parkinson show when you were nine and he so delighted you with his endless anecdotes that you resolved to devote your life to show business. Uh, no. Oh, well, then he came to your university and lectured on civil rights, which made you change your degree from Sanskrit to jurisprudence. Uh, no. Well, whatever it was, he inspired you. Well, bravo you, bravo Pen. Now, we need to get those proofs returned or his researcher, his fact-checker, his ghostwriter will not get paid. Ghostwriter? They've given me a desk at the nurse's station let me know when the proofs arrive. There's coffee round the corner. In the waiting room, this guy is hurling himself against the vending machine. I recognise him from the tabloids. Rhett Reinhardt, Penn's wayward son. He stops when he sees me. Machine not working? I don't know. I'm trying to bash my head in. He makes another run at the machine. I tackle him. He trips and I manage to sit on him. Get off! I'll get off if you sit down. Who are you? Oh, I'm Ed. You're the son. <laughs> the son. That's good. The son. I get up. Okay. He gets up. He turns as if to sit down, then makes another headfirst lunge. I tackle him again. Bang my hand, bruise my shin. Now I have a limp for real. OK. Listen, ow! Oh, oh. Suicide by a vending machine, you'll get a sore head. I killed my father. No, you didn't. Who are you? Rhett. May, may I call you Rhett? You did not kill your father. Stop trying to make me feel better. Everybody is always trying to make me feel better. I'm the one who put your dad in a coma. Dad? He's not a dad. Rhett, I'm so sorry. What I did, I did out of impulsive admiration of your father's brilliance. Brilliance? When people talk to me about my father's brilliance, I just want to... <laughs> Oh, my suit. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine, I deserve it. 
No Kleenex, sorry. Listen, this morning... Ooh. Oh, the, um, your father was on his bicycle. I emerged from my front door. I saw him. I shouted. I can't explain why. I'm, I'm not a shouter. Oh, shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Do you want the real story? Please. Last night, I went to my father's club. I asked him for money. He accused me of being a perpetual student. Him, former circus clown, former barrister, former stand-up comedian. He accused me of not sticking at anything. Fathers, they can be so... Mind you, my father's dead, but my mother, she's very withholding. I told him he'd ruin my life. I'd never told him that before. You named me Rhetoric Reinhardt. I inherited your myopia, your short attention span, your baldness. My name is Rhetoric, and in five years I will be completely bald. You go out with women young enough, Bella McFadden, she could be my kid sister. You give me a taste for luxury, then deprive me of the means to lead a tolerable life. He went completely white. I thought he was having a heart attack. No, listen, you may have upset He him. went yellow. You said he was white. He was all the colours of the rainbow, OK? I killed him. Rhett! The doctors think that you should see your father now. Sanjay Patel, Penn Reinhardt's comedy writing partner. Big bearded bear of a guy. He may not last the night. Good. I'm glad. Do you hear me? I killed him, and I'm glad. And I don't care if everyone knows. Uh, hmm. He was, uh... I sat on him. He was trying to bash his brains out. Oh. Yeah. Who are you? I'm um, Ed. You smell disgusting, Ed. Come with me. <laughs> Don't rub so hard, that's a silk lining. Right. I think we're making it worse. I love this jacket. Quality material. My dad was a tailor. What are you doing? Giving it some heat. Listen, I know how much you love Penn Reinhardt. Do ya? All those terrific series you wrote together. Thank you. So what I have to say may upset you. Really? Penn Coma. Person responsible, me. Who I am? Uh, I'm, I'm nobody. This morning, outside my flat, Penn was on his bicycle. He was cycling by. So? I saw him. I shouted. Don't ask me why. I'm not a shouter. Shouted what? A salutation. Salutation. <laughs> All hail Penn Reinhardt, National Treasure. Gosville Street is not worthy of you. Penn must have loved that. It distracted him. He collided with the van. He he might die. I did it. What a story. I'm going to write about this. Do you mind if I write about this? Uh, please, don't, don't write about it. I just needed to tell someone. Someone close to Penn. Hey, I understand. Know something? When I heard he was in a coma, part of me wept. The other part, rejoice. You love him. Love, hate, admire, resent, revere, resist. Embrace, repel, understand? Um, no. We work together, not even 50-50. 75-25. I'm up half the night thrashing out the idea and I do the actual writing. Then we go out to lunch and the head waiter's warning over him. Other celebrities making a pilgrimage to our table like he's a secular saint. Well, he is in a way. I came here today to make sure the bastard is dead. How awful is that? That's pretty awful. Who are you? A nobody. Librarian. I have a flat. Lots of books. A girlfriend. Lucinda. She's a barrister. We're getting married. Don't get involved with the law. That's what Penn always says. She's sleeping with her head of chambers. I've never said that out loud before. How much was that suit? Uh, 750. 750. Hong Kong. Soho. That's impressive. I grew up with stitching. I'll give you the number. Sanjay? Is Sanjay Patel in there? I'm here, Bella. So, Bo Brummel, have you met Bella McFadden? Bella McFadden, Penn Reinhardt's incredibly sexy, Oxford-educated actress girlfriend. Marion Spooner says you should come quickly, Sanjay. You have to say your final goodbye to Penn. Who's this? This is Ed. Ed, Bella, Bella, Ed. See ya. Hi. You're dripping. Why are you dripping? Well, a uh, bit of a mishap. Will you take me for coffee? Not out there. It's a madhouse. There's a cafeteria just for neurosurgeons in the annex. They gave me the code. The place is packed. Walls blood red. Nothing on offer but roast beef, very rare, and green beans. Neurosurgeons plying scalpels and forks with great dexterity, drinking gallons of coffee. We find a quiet corner. Isn't this heaven? I had no idea. I intend to come here all the time. Let's hope you won't have to. Won't have to? That Penn will recover. Oh, I doubt that. 
The side of his head was smashed in. None of the TV reports have dared mention it. I'm so sorry. Bella, is it okay if I call you Bella? You're from Conti. Conti? Consolidated talent, Penn's agent. I'm with Hermione Skelton Associates, but sometimes I feel they, you know, not... Not? Attentive to my needs, the way Conti are with Penn. Uh, may I extend my condolences for what's happened? Poor Penn. He could be a very controlling, opinionated, joyless pig, though I loved him to be. Bella, listen. I need to leave Hermione. Do you? I know. Everyone thinks she's this magical agent, but really, there is no rapport there. I need rapport. Whenever I speak to Jeremy, there's always this latent... Rapport? I feel it with you, too. So, will you run it past Jeremy? I know he thinks Penn and me at the same agency, incestuous. But now that Penn's got, like, half a skull, just say Bella wants to have a coffee. You'll understand. You will? Oh, you are a... Adorable. She jumps up and caresses my face. Mm, mm, then she kisses me. Mm, Bella McFadden is kissing me, and that's when Bella, I... Bella, 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 Bella. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm in a relationship, and there's something you really should... You're upset. Why are you upset? I killed Penn Reinhardt. Don't be silly. It wasn't your fault the boys in the senior common room was cancelled. I know Penn blamed Conti. <laughs> Penn blames everyone. This morning, Penn was on his bicycle. He was cycling by. I shouted. I can't explain why. I'm not a shouter. Good. I hate shouters. He collided with the van. Now he's going to die. I'm incredibly guilty. Do, do you understand? God. Unbelievable. I feel terrible. So unexpected. Exactly. One spontaneous gesture. One second of unthinking. Pink. What? Pink of the shirt on the surgeon behind you. I've been searching for that shade all my life. I have to take a photo. Oh, my God, I have come close to that pink only once in my life. Jaipur! So Bella photographs her rare shade of pink. She gives her autograph to its owner. I slink away. Corridor of the trauma ward. No the hope. doctors, no where hope. are they? No Sounding hope. more strident. No hope. No hope. No hope. No hope. No hope. No hope. I decide no to get myself out of there no before the real Ed Harwood no turns up with the proofs. Ah, there you are. Ah, Mrs Spooner. You'd better go in now. Me? In there. Say your goodbyes on behalf of Consolidated Talent. Right. There he is. Head bandaged. There are tubes. Tubes everywhere. Ah, uh, Mr Reinhardt. Pen. Ed Harwood here. From Conti. Everyone in the office is rooting for you. Uh, the whole country. You should see the crowd. So, uh, get well soon. I creep to the door, check whether Marion Spooner is listening. The corridor is empty. I creep back in, close the door, creep forward. Mr Reinhard? Penn? Uh, Gosfield Street, this morning. Um, you may remember cycling by. I was in the street... I greeted you. I shouted. You lost your balance. I made you lose your balance. His right eyelid flutters. Can you hear me? Oh, oh Mr. Reinhardt. If you have locked-in syndrome, I promise you I will retrain. I will learn how to translate the flutterings of your right eyelid into works of lucid prose. His right eyelid flutters again. Because if it hadn't been for me and that stupid shout... But my intention was pure. I would do it again, sir. All hail Penn Reinhardt, national treasure. Gosfield Street is not worthy of you. Right eyelid blinks violently, <gasps> then opens. Right eyeball gazes at me. You're alive. Sentient. <gasps> All hail Penn Reinhardt. You little imbecile. You can speak. I am going to pulverize you. Whatever you say. Listen, I am going to see to it that you lose everything. Your job at the agency, your house. What house? A uh, tiny flat. Her Majesty's Customs and Excise will investigate your VAT returns. I'm not registered for that. You will become a national pariah. Anything, as long as you're alive and restored to full health. Moron! Non-entity, I shall destroy you. Really? Whenever I give an interview, a broadcast, an after-dinner speech, I shall remind the public of your unadulterated idiocy. My what? Your renown as an imbecile will render you unemployable. People will sneer. 
snicker at the sight of you. <gasps> Television comedians will garner cheap laughs at the mention of your name. Now, wait a second. You shall starve. You shall not sleep. You shall trudge the streets of London bereft of friendship, respect, solace. And you'll be there beside me after I've told the world what you're really like. <clears throat> I mean, I'm sorry, but your son hates you. <clears throat> your comedy partner is seething with rage. Your secretary has spilled the beans about the ghostwriter. I hate to have to say this, but your girlfriend, Bella, she can't wait to move on. Not five minutes ago, we were up in the cafe. She had her tongue down my throat. Ooh, ooh. I've done it again. Murdered Pen Reinhardt. Only this time, I don't feel so guilty. Ah! His right eyelid flutters. The bastard is back in the land of the living. That's when the room is suddenly filled with Marion Spooner. Mr Harwood, there's no need. He can't hear you. The doctors say it's unlikely he'll regain consciousness. This is my cue. Get the hell out. Let them get on with pulling the plug. He's conscious. Wishful thinking. He just spoke to me. He spoke? What did he say? Um, he said he was sorry for all the trouble, but he intends to keep on cycling. <gasps> Dr Macmillan! Dr Rabrakash! 6pm. I'm out in the open air. Jubilation from the crowd as news of Penn's recovery is tweeted round the universe. I cross the road, wondering how long before Penn's revenge campaign kicks in. A taxi pulls up. A guy about my age gets out. He looks frazzled. He's carrying a cardboard box. My doppelganger with the proofs. All hail, Ed Harwood! He looks round, but he doesn't spot me. I skedaddle off down the street. Ed Hansen speaking. Edwin. Mother. Penn's alive. His mother is on the news. That's his secretary, Marion Spooner. What a relief. I haven't eaten a thing all day. Mother? Know what? I was the guy who put Penn in hospital. Oh, Ed. And then I resurrected him. Oh, Ed. I did. I went into his hospital room. I spoke to him. The right combination of words. He woke up. Are you proud of me now? No, Ed. I'm back in the library by 6.45. No one there but Nick. There's a miniature skip, plonk in the middle of the history aisle. Nick is tossing books into it. Nick! Nick! What happened to your suit? Oh, forget the suit. Do I still have a job? Barbara Wynne-Jones and Oliver from the Ministry loved the suit. They loved the three-word mantra, but they drew the line at the sick joke. Joke? You put pen in a coma? Come on, Ed. Nick, Nick, stop that! Those are good books. Nobody reads them. Nick, what I said is true. I killed Penn. Oh, you're delusional. And then I revived him. My father called. He spoke to Penn's surgeons. They were the ones who got him out of the coma. OK, their version of events, fine. We're going to have to let you go, Ed. Uh, fine. I mean, you're getting rid of all the books. Good luck to you and your DVDs and your... Megabytes. Find yourself a dry cleaner, a therapist, and take a holiday. Holiday? Honeymoon. I'm getting married. Lucinda, 7pm. Euphoria. Edwin. Lucinda, sorry. What are you drinking? Champagne. Excellent. You look terrible. I tell her the story. My shout. Pen's wobble. The vision statement, the hospital, Penn's resurrection, the sacking from the library. The only thing I omit is Bella's kiss. She listens. She really listens. I have her complete attention. Then she says... Nick fired you. Is that all you can say? Well, that's all that's relevant. Lou, the most extraordinary day... Waiter! Wait, marry me. The bill, please. I know you're sleeping with your head of chambers. Am I? He's married, isn't he? What about you? Unemployed, crumpled suit, nasty stains, delusional. Delusional? You have never met Pen Reinhardt. You are so wrong. He woke up naturally from his coma. You did not resurrect him. Do me a favour, Lucinda. Don't marry me. Because marriage is based on trust, understanding, passion, commitment. Stop ranting. Relationship? Ha! I'm the escort, the patsy, the beard. Lucinda's right. I'm ranting. I'm like some emotional It feels good to rant. But suddenly there's a buzz going round the place. A celebrity entrance. Bella McFadden. She's with the neurosurgeon in the pink shirt. Followed by Sanjay Patel. Rhetoric Reinhardt. Marion Spooner. 
a celebratory dinner, a toast to Pen. What could be sweeter, less delusional? Ed! Ed! I head for the kitchen. A sympathetic pastry chef shows me an exit, an alley which leads round to Piccadilly. I limp through Mayfair, a diagonal route across Oxford Street to Fitzrovia. I trudge up Gosfield Street, ten paces from my front door. Delusions, I know they are delusions, it's been a hard day. But I'm hope. The comforting feel of the latch key fitting into the slot. Home. Oh, God, no, not again. Not him. But when I turn around, it's Kitty on her 1950s push bike. Her basket loaded with books. Hello, Ed. Kitty. Your books. Nick wanted to throw them into the skip. I screamed at him. <laughs> Good for you. Thanks. So, uh, Alexi's in, and we're out. Afraid so. What will you do? No idea. I mean, libraries are my life. You? Um, uh, more people than ever on bicycles. Maybe I could retrain as a mechanic. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. I think so. Definitely. Ed? Yeah? You didn't really put Pen Reinhardt in a coma. I did, Kitty. Gosh. Not intentionally. No, of course not. You believe me? Yes. I'd better go. No, no. Come in. A, a cup of something herbal? Okay. A quick cuppa. Was uploaded to the channel, Thinking Out Loud. Please like, comment and subscribe to the Thinking Out Loud channel. Thank you.